Welcome everybody to the Linus and Fabian podcast presented by Athletes USA. Yes! Yay! And welcome back to the Linus and Fabian podcast episode unknown. Probably fourth or fifth at this point. Either way, we're delighted fourth. to have you back here. Linus Gilgren, hope everybody had a great holidays. Even if it's January, we're a little late on that one, but uh, delighted to have you here. How are you doing, Fabian? I'm fantastic. Thank you very much. Obviously, Happy New Year to everyone as well. Um, delayed, well, not Merry Christmas anymore because we're past that, like you said. But uh, hopefully, everyone has a you know much better 2021. Uh, I think most most of us can say 2020 was a difficult year uh, mm-hmm. for many reasons, but also a year where we've probably learned a lot and uh, taken a few lessons from. So. Um, yeah, we're Absolutely. delighted to be back here in the new year and ready to get started and really, you know, focusing a lot on this podcast and bringing out more content to share with our, our subscribers and listeners and YouTubers and everyone who's, you know, absorbing yeah. our content. So excited and raring to go. Yeah. And really, we, we, uh, if you haven't listened to any of the episodes before, really what we try to do here is, um, obviously talk about sports and the psychological aspect of it, but also how it affects our life in, in, you know, real society and um, how it is to be an athlete, how it is to be around athletes and um, how, you know, technology and the new days and all the stuff that's coming out is affecting the up and coming athletes, both positively and negatively. And um, today we wanted to talk about social media what do you mm-hmm. think, Fabian? How, what do you think the benefits are with social media for up and coming athletes? First of all, yeah, I mean, it just just going back, it's quite crazy when we think about how social media has developed and changed for athletes just over the last. Uh, I mean, well, I think I, for some reason I remember starting Facebook in two thousand and six, so that is like my go to. You were early. <laughs> that's like my go-to point so that's what yeah. 15 years ago now mm. and uh oof, yeah i mean my experience with social media is always i it's it's great but it's also a really detrimental tool in yeah. certain ways if you don't know how to use it properly now depends from what angle we we look at this i think what social media has given athletes is an opportunity for them to become even bigger celebrities than what they already were. Mm. You know, we look at Ronaldo, we look at David Beckham, we look at Pogba, we look at, I mean, for, you know, golfers, it will be Spieth, maybe Rory McIlroy, those kind of players. Mm. But what it has allowed them to do is just expose themselves, you know, so much more. And people who perhaps before weren't into golf, who didn't really know about them that much, they come across them on social media, they start following them. And they start following their journey. And obviously what that means is, you know, you get more followers, but you become under more pressure ultimately. And, you know, what do I mean by that is everything that you do uh, in your life is, you know, you are, you are under the lens. Everyone is constantly watching, you know, Mm. people around the corner with their phones, filming you, watching what you're doing, anything that you post, you know, something in the background that you might not have realized is there. And it's just a very, very dangerous game at the same time, but also has a lot of benefits. Yeah. And obviously, you know, science is clear. Uh, there's not obviously enough research out there on social media because it simply hasn't been around for that long for them to do longer studies. But, you know, um, when you open your phone and you get a message from someone, it's dopamine gets created in your body, which is the same thing released if you gamble, if you have sex, um, and competing as well. Um, and what's happened, you know, with a lot of younger kids is that, you know, if life brings you down, you know, here's a liquor cabinet, right? Same thing with alcohol, why people do alcohol. So we've gotten a massive over boost of, um, uh, you know, dopamine. There's a great psychologist called Simon Sonic out there. If you haven't listened, I would highly recommend you go on YouTube and type in Simon Sonic and millennials, uh, especially how it's affected the millennial generation just because that we were 
young adults when, when social media came out. And um, I think it's created two types of personalities nowadays, that you have a physical self and you have a, a virtual self. So the person you are online doesn't necessarily cope with the one that you are in real life. And how is that important towards sports? Well, if you go out and practice, for instance, golf, if you are more focused on creating content for your page, you're not really focused on getting better at your sport because social media really has nothing to do with your performance, but it has everything to do with sponsorship, um, potential sponsors. I mean, I remember when, when I was playing and how important it was for me to get a good picture from when I were in different countries and, you know, hashtag Oscar Jacobson as I was sponsored with their clothing at the time and tight list and, you know, how, how I even got sponsors just because I, I posted a lot of great things on my social media. But I've realized now afterwards that it also affected the way that I practiced, the way that I played, because I kind of kept on looking, you know, how many likes have I gotten? Or, oh, I didn't. I got more likes for that, or I don't like that picture. So it's starting to create more um, insecurities about my own body on the swing doesn't look as good there and boom, 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 and took away focus from what I was actually doing. You know, if you're an athlete, you have to perform, right? So if you're sitting, for instance, as an accountant, you can take a little bit of a break and look on your phone. But if you're in the middle of a practice session and you kind of get distracted by the phone, you have to refocus again and get back into it. If you want to keep on getting better and working on your swing and the alignments, and if you're chipping and putting and all that. So I think with golf, it might affect you even more just because you have the opportunity to have your phone in your pocket. If you play soccer, for instance, it's not like you had your phone out there on the field, like, you know, mm -hmm. that you were standing there in the goal. Oh, the ball's on the other side. I can pick up my phone and check social media, right? Like, Golf is more of a slow paced sport. So you had the opportunity to have your phone. So I always encourage all the uh, athletes that I work, especially golfers uh, with my coaching program to like put your phone on, on, you know, silent in your golf bag and dedicate time when you actually check it during your breaks, mm -hmm. you know, unless someone is dying and, and, you know, you don't really have to check your phone, but then you dedicate social media time during your like for, during your like breaks yeah and, i um, think i think just to jump in one of the words that you said there focus is i mm. think really important and this is what it's actually something i've realized myself of late as well is my ability to focus has significantly deteriorated over the last couple of years and i think i'll tell you why when we have I'm very, very big on being in the present moment, you know, not mm. thinking about the past, not thinking about the future and really just trying to be right here, right now in this moment, what's happening, you know, what is going on in your surroundings, that is ultimately what we can control, you know, we can't control the past and we can't control the future. But social media has sort of led, you know, for me, you know, sometimes you just go on your phone, you're scrolling, and you're scrolling. And you're not really taking in the content. You're not focusing. You're not paying attention. You're just scrolling because it's, like you say, dopamine. You're just trying to satisfy something. You're just trying to pass time. And the more I do that, the more I realize, you know, I'm not engaged. I'm not focused. And that obviously translates over in, onto the field, onto the pitch, onto the golf course, yeah. wherever it is, because, you know, Focus isn't something that you can just say, I'm going to turn my focus on and be focused for an hour. You can't do that. It's something that actually you should practice, you know, and the more you focus and keeping your brain in that present moment and what's happening right here, right now is the best way to alleviate worries, you know, anxiety and competition as well and all those things. And I think social media has really played a big part in, you know, uh, making it more difficult for us to be in that present moment and to focus on actually yeah. what can I do and what can I change right now? I think uh, how many, this is a great question I got a couple of years ago. How many phone numbers have you memorized the last 10 years? One, my partners, and that was difficult yeah. enough. M me too. Same thing mm. for me. I still, okay. Yeah. I, I, I got her number in my head. Mm. Other than that, memory it's affecting our memory like crazy because you don't really have mm. to have it anymore 
You don't have to yeah. know your appointments. You put it in your phone. You don't really have to know where you've been. You can just go back and look at your photos. And um, I think it really taken an effect on our, you know, ability to to even store new knowledge, um, our ability to care. You know, if there's so much stuff to care for on social media, that let's say there's a bombing in Iraq, 200 people die. Um, kids got kidnapped in Africa, uh, global warming, presidential election in the United States, China releases co like COVID or whatever happened with China there. Like there's so much stuff going on that you don't, you can't care, but you do care. And the news have changed. You know, they, they might be on the news earlier today. There was a bombing in Iraq, five people reported dead and 10 injured. Hey, how's the weather looking over there? Like they will just like, present something that's horrible and then mm. just boom. Like we're, we're kind of like rigged to use this too much stuff going on to care. And why is that important? Well, people think, I think, especially for an athlete, the ability you need to have now to, to block all that out and realize that your Instagram followers or your likes or your Facebook or your Snapchats and all that stuff is not gonna win your soccer games or win golf tournaments for you. All it's gonna mm. do is help you, but really your focus needs to be on the better you get, the more marketing value you have. So obviously like the Ronaldos and all those guys, well, they were already amazing players. Like it's Tiger Woods. You, you can't get, I think you can't get famous. You can't become an amazing athlete by being an influencer. Like, but it's also super important because people want to know what you're doing. Hey, I want to know what you're doing at home now. Like, what are you, what are you guys? And they're posting videos and like, oh, this guy's not posting enough. And then people are complaining over it. And like, I talked with one of my, uh, one of my golfers. Um, and I said, if you win the U S open and I say, great job, I knew it. And then someone posts something and says, well, if he didn't, if, the other guy didn't chank it on 17. He wouldn't have won because you have the ability to trash talk someone that's won now in a oh, different yeah. way. Right. And I asked, which one would you listen to the most? And he said, well, probably I would listen to the negative comments. Right. And I think that's so important nowadays is that people have the opportunity to have an opinion without Everything. having any knowledge. And also, People don't understand how much it takes to become an athlete. And then you're under such a stethoscope that if you do anything wrong, if you if you get in an argument with your girlfriend, if you're out on a bar, someone might take a picture and say something terrible about you online that ruins your career, that it's taken completely out of context, right? Well, the worst thing is people actively go to do that don't they? Yeah. Um, from my experience is they want oh, trolls. I mean, yeah, trolls and, yeah. and, you know, people go out to hurt you in different ways, you know, and I've known people who have tried to start fights with, with players, um, people who, you know, try to just start saying things just to get a reaction. And then obviously that reaction, they can either sell to the newspaper or it, be, it comes out in the media and it tarnishes the reputation of that player and, and I think as an athlete, the most important thing to know is that people are out there doing that consciously. And I know the when you read a comment online that is negative, it is so hard to block out. I mean, in my experience, yeah. you know, I would have a game and I would then after the game always look at every single comment. You know, what are people saying about me? Did they think I played well? Did they think I played bad? Did they think I should have done that? And then really, you know. Why, why you, you start thinking, why, why am I doing this? Because to continue watching the Linus and Fabian podcast, go to Linus and Fabian podcast on YouTube or click the link below. Thanks for watching.